Hello, I'm Dani. Welcome to the workshop. In the previous tutorial, we covered the basic extrude, cut, and boss features. Today, we continue with revolve, sweep, loft. Also, we will look on chamfers and fillets and different patterns. So, I will show you one trick how to have this sketch inside your SOLIDWORKS so you don't have to switch windows all the time. Of course, it's much nicer if you work with two monitors, then you can have just the sketch on your second monitor and work on your first monitor, but I don't have. I suppose many of you don't have also at home. So I will show you this workaround. Just use the snip tool. It's good first to zoom to one of the areas that you need then make a snip of the sketch and save it in a place from which you can access it easily. I have already done this. So we will just move forward to the model. This is our model. I will start modeling from the top plane. So I choose the top plane, add a new sketch and then tools, sketch tools, sketch picture, and you can pick your image. Also, it's good to scale it so it's close to your original sizes. This should be 11. And move it a little bit away from the center point and the drawings that you will have. Additionally, you can Put a full image transparency. It's also helpful. Otherwise, it will stay white and uh, can disturb you. And then just say OK and go out of the sketch. Then we start with the real modeling. On the top plane, I will add a new sketch. First, I will add a center line because we will make a revolve and our revolve will be around this center line. Then looking on the sketch, we should repeat the contours here so we can revolve around them. And then we look on our sketch. The most inner diameter is 4. This is the one here. Then the next one is 6. And we have 9 and 11. If we have a look on the opposite side, we also have 9 and 11, which means that this, sorry, escape, these are collinear and these also are collinear. What else we can see is that these two are symmetrical, which means that this and this are also equal. These two are also collinear. I have to move a little bit my drawing. Next. This is half millimeter here and we have a 90 degree. So these are perpendicular and equal. 0 0.5. 
And what else is this is in the middle of our model? Okay, I missed to measure this. It should be five. And the complete length is 12. Now, the good thing is when you use a sketch and you forget to and it's, there is a forgotten size, like in my case, this here is missing. You can always uh, scale the sketch to the correct size and just measure it. It will be almost 100% correct. So, next is this is on 3.5. And this size is also missing. I will correct the sketch for you. I think this was four. Okay, now this is the basic contour that we want to revolve. And we go to features, revolved pause base, now we have to choose an axis of revolution. This could be any line in our sketch and it could be also external axis. I will pick this as my axis of revolution. Then you have the choice to make it blind and to choose on what degree. You can make it up to vertex, up to surface or offset from surface also you can make it a mid plane up to vertex will be if you have more complex shape and it should end on some uncertain or not measurable point on your model to surface it's similar just you end it to a Phase offset from surface will end on certain distance from this phase, and if it's a mid plane, this is very useful in many occasions. I will just show you now. It's making this degree but equally spread on both directions. In our case, we need 360 degree blind. So this is the full revolution of the revolve and I will hit OK. Another thing here is when you are making partial and not symmetrical revolve, you can choose one direction degree and the second direction degree. In the second direction, of course, you have all the options you have you are having in the first. And thin feature is when you're trying to make a revolve from an open contour and then you can choose thin. It's similar like in the boss extrudes, just in this case it will make a revolve. So the start of our part is ready. The next thing that we have to do is some cutouts. So let's have a look on our sketch. First I will make this standard cut here. It's just a normal sketch. We see that the width of the cut is 1 and the total span is 4.4. I will make it a bit more complicated so I can show you the, some of the patterns. I make two construction lines 
attach this point here to the midpoint. As I said, the span is 4.4. We can measure that. And the width is 1. Also, I will make this and this equal. And now we make a classic extrude cut up to surface and we cut it up to this surface here. Next, I will make a circular pattern. For circular pattern, you need either axis or some circular object or circle. In this case, we have everything, so we don't need uh, additional axis. Here on direction, I will just choose some of the faces which are rounded. Then I want to have four instances on equal spacing, 360 degrees. This means that it will spread them equally four times around this center of this uh, um, circular face. And if you want to give a precise spacing between different patterns, you should choose instance spacing, then you choose the degree. What we have next, we can either uh, pattern features and faces or bodies. And we can choose also some instances to skip. So just to show you instances to skip, I will give eight instances of my feature, which is this cut here. And then I will just skip the ones that I don't need. Now. The next thing that we have to do is to add the cutouts here. Normally you can make this with the standard cut and um, offset from surface, but because I want to show you all the operators, I will use swept cut. I will move to different preview and go back to the top plane and add a sketch. As we can see, it's going on one millimeter from the outer faces and it's ending with this point here. So I will make it like this. This is parallel. This is collinear to this side and the only thing left to define is this one millimeter. This is the profile for our sweep and I will change the preview again. What else we can see? It's on 64.32 degrees. It's ending. So I go here and make a new sketch. I will convert this line, not trim, sorry. I will convert this line here. Then add two construction lines make the points vertical and 
it automatically made them perpendicular. We don't want that. The degree is 64, 32. So now we have the correct degree and we can trim the not needed part. We have now path and we have also profile and we can make our sweep cut. Keep in mind that it doesn't matter if you are making cut or the boss feature, the options that you have for the different operators, they are the same. So sweep cut. Here you have a screen in which you have to select your profile, then your path. This is my profile and this is my path. As you can see first, it's making it only in one direction. You have here three different options. You can make it in one direction, in the other direction or in both directions if your profile and path are like mine. You have also here different options. If you're making more complex sweep, you have profile twist or different profile orientation. In the simple one is this, more than this you won't need for the associate exam. Then we will make again a circular pattern. We choose a face because we are coming directly from the sweep operator it's already in our features. I just make the number smaller and this cut is also ready. What we have to add next is this cutout. And this cutout I will add with a loft feature. So you can use really here a standard cut and it's the easiest way, but because I want to show you the loft feature, that's why I will make it with a loft. For that reason, I will need a reference plane. I choose the top plane, a parallel one, a second reference. I use this face here to be tangent. This is the plane for our first face, uh, first profile. We need two profiles for the loft. Then I will add another reference plane, again parallel and tangent. It's automatically aligning it to the other side, but if you need just on one side and it's aligning to the wrong one, you can change here with flip offset where exactly it's positioned. Then on this plane I'm making a sketch which is 5 on 2 and it's from here. Also for easier alignment I always use the construction lines. So we have 2 here and 5 here. And then on the next plane, I will just have to sketch and convert the entities of the previous one. And we'll hide the planes. Now we have two profiles and we can make a loft cut. You have to choose the first profile. Keep in mind that when you're making a loft, for example, if I choose this point, when picking the sketch or I'm close to this point, it will start from this point here. And if I choose the one here now, as you can see, it's twisting it. It's not a problem if you make it by mistake, you can always adjust where exactly it's related. So this point related to this here. Additionally, for the loft, you can use a guide curve or center line, but this is more advanced features, so this should be enough. 
of your level. So the base of our tire is ready. Usually it doesn't need anything else, but we will add a fillet. So we go here on the fillet, choose the value of our fillet. You can apply it to an edge or you can apply it to a face. I will add fillet just in these areas here. And it's ready for this part. Now when I'm ready with this part of the tire, I will go back to my sketch with the drawing and I will remove this sketch picture. You have to click it and delete. And now I will add the other. Okay, sketch tools, which is for the tire. Again, I recommend you to scale your images. Or they will be too big and hard to use. Okay, we will make a new revolve for the outer part of the tire. Add a new sketch to the top. Add a center line. And I will just sketch the contours first. As you can see, I didn't make this here because it's a chamfer. Sometimes it's better to use chamfers instead of making it inside your uh, sketches because when your chamfer is uh, afterwards with operator, it's easier to control. So these two are collinear and equal and they are also collinear with this line. The next is this also is collinear. Okay, and this one also. As we can see the outer diameter is 21. We grab the line, the center line and just make it 21. And this in the middle is two millimeter wide and with inner diameter nine. So we add two and nine. Now we have to make the revolve. If you select some of the lines before choosing the revolve operator, it will automatically pick this line as your center line. If you want to change your mind, just click here again and pick something else. As I said, any line in the sketch is doing the work. Now, very important in this case is because this is a um, second part. We need a multi-body part. You should uncheck merge result and then hit OK. The basics of the outer part are ready. Now we have to add a chamfer. You have different types of chamfers. You can also add it both to face and an edge. You can make it also asymmetrically. You can change the degrees. In our case, we need simple chamfer, one millimeter on 45 degrees, and we just hit OK. The next thing that we will do are these cutouts for the tire. 
they are one millimeter wide and they're up to the chamfer edge what is also interesting if you have a look on the tire here so the cut from this side is towards the nut cut part of the other side so we have to make it one for one side and second for the other side now i will add a sketch we add again a construction line so we can have it much easier So my construction line is considered to the wrong place. So this point is the midpoint here. And these points are attached to this circle here. The next one is we make it one millimeter, one millimeter wide and we cut it on 5.5 .5. so features extrude cut blind find 5.5 .5. now when we have more than one body we can select which body will this operator effect i can leave it to auto select in my case because i cannot cut the other one As we can see, we have 30 pieces of this one. So on the other side, when we add a new sketch, First, we have to define where the other one will land. So we have 360 divide on 30 and it's 12 degrees. This means that the middle should be at 6 degrees. Three point corner rectangle. This point is a midpoint here, and this line is perpendicular to this here. This is not vertical. Okay, now it's okay. The points are attached to this circle, and the size is 1. Then what we have to do is extrude cut 5.5. .5 and the last step is to revolve this cutout so the, to, to make a circular pattern of all these cutouts i will choose again this face okay not so this face 30 instances and we pick both features And our tire is ready to make a circular also to make a linear pattern you need a line I will delete our guiding sketch now we don't need it anymore and I will add some colors so it's more fancy so this is our tire I will show the first sketch let's so show the first sketch and pick this line to make a linear pattern and here you can choose either feature or body for the features you saw already how they are pattern now I will choose bodies you pick the instance count and the distance and you can choose two directions so i will choose also another direction now uh, 
and when you're ready just hit OK. Okay, so that's all we have covered. Let's see our result now. The Lego tire is ready. You can find the drawing in the description of the video. Please don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to stay up to date, subscribe for the channel. Next week we'll be doing assembly.